Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Salatu Wassalamu Ala Rasulillah. First of all, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Isra and I'd like to thank their team for giving me this opportunity to speak about a very dear topic uh, to my heart. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is going to be uh, very beneficial uh, for everybody that is listening. Uh, Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Um, so, subhanAllah, um, you know, it's so important um, to be happily married. It's so important to understand that much of your happiness, um, much of your productivity, much of your focus, um, much of your sanity after marriage is you know, dependent to a large extent on the quality of your marriage. And that's something that should never, ever be undermined. I know there's an Arab proverb that has it, it's better to have, you know, 1,000 enemies outside of your home, but don't have one enemy inside of your home. Your home should be a place of serenity, of tranquility. And Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, sakana, That Allah has made for your home a place of sakina. So it's really, really important um, to understand that one of the objectives of life should be to be in always uh, a parasympathetic state or to be in a very calm, tranquil state. We call this uh, in Islam, sakina. And sakina really, if you're in a state of sakina, it really does amazing things to your life. I want to quickly just quote a 75-year uh, a uh, Harvard study where they tracked the lives of about 730 men over a long period of time. And they just wanted to know what is it that makes those who are successful in life, who are well known for their um, you know, contributions and their success and their happiness, was there, you know, were there any traits, any qualities, any characteristics that stood out um, for these individuals? And they came from different walks of life. And subhanAllah, they would study their records and interview them year after year. And many, many years into their adult years and their older years, they continued the study until they uh, found something very remarkable about those who who did um, who were successful, and the the study um, stated that a good relationship um, makes you happier and healthier. That the quality of your relationships is what um, contributes to having a profound impact on many areas of life. That it has a ripple effect. So, my brothers and my sisters in Islam. Um, you know, subhanAllah, there's a saying that says that the, the person who learns from his mistakes, he's smart, right? But the person who learns from the mistakes of others is wise. And so subhanAllah, Allah Azza wa Jal, he blessed me to be in this space of marriage for um, some 22 years, being uh, married myself, um, having counseled so many people, married off so many people. Um, subhanAllah, Allah has blessed me to, to learn about some of the greatest contributors that are contributing to divorce. Now, in the Western world, um, when we look at divorce statistics, um, it is well documented and it's over 50%. So after over 50% of marriages in the Western world, um, you know, fall apart. And, uh, and that has, um, you know, uh, some serious ramifications um, uh, on, on many levels. So um, inshallah ta'ala, without any further ado, um, I'm going to go right into uh, six of the uh, mistakes that many people who got divorced uh, made before their marriage. Six mistakes, inshallah ta'ala, um, that I, I pray that you will um, you know, benefit uh, from them and, and, and be mindful uh, of them, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, so we're going, to go, we're going to go right into it. And the first one is uh, not having the right intentions or let's say wrong intentions. So often, you know, um, we find that uh, some people, they just marry for the idea of marriage. So they're marrying um, for the idea of marriage and they're not really looking at uh, the purpose and the objectives of marriage and, um, you know, what comes with marriage and what type of things um, or characteristics that they need to look for um, in the ideal spouse. So subhanAllah, that's something that, um, that, that, that you know, they, they, they're getting married 
uh, perhaps um, because of, um, you know, their friend got married or um, they looked at other people's, um, you know, who are happy and they're happily married. And subhanAllah, they, they want to be as happy because they think, oh, look, you know, marriage is going to um, make them happy. Okay, but they, yeah, of course, marriage can make you happy. But if you're if you're married to the right person and you're married with the right objective and you are the right person, so um, that's something to 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 always keep in mind. Inshallah, the intention. A lot of there's a lot of people out there who get married to escape. Okay, they're escaping from uh, something that's bothering them in their life, something that's um, you know uh, testing them. They're going through hardships. They're not happy at home. Um, you know, they're going, um, you know, they're just they're not happy in life. And they think that marriage um, is going to uh, solve uh, their problem. And if anything, it can only um, increase in problems. Now, the, the other thing is that when you get married with this type of mindset, um, not only will you cause injustice probably to yourself, but you're causing injustice to other people. You're causing injustice um, probably to your spouse who you end up marrying. You may end up also causing injustice to any children that come about uh, from this marriage. So it is important um, to always ensure um, that, you know, that the intentions are, are, are pure, that you're marrying with pure intentions, that you're marrying for the right reasons and not because you're trying to escape from a problem. So that's something to really keep in mind. So wrong intentions could include, you know, um, getting married, you know, will make you look good in front of other people, make you look good in front of your parents, will make you look good in front of your friends. Okay. And that's, you don't get married um, to look good in front of other people, right? Um, or because everyone else is getting married. It's the trend. It's the buzzword of the season. It's spring. Uh, marriage is in the air, you know. And uh, again, you need to be very, very careful, subhanAllah. Um, and, you know, like I said, trying to uh, please your parents. So um, I think with regards to this point, number one, um, instead of focusing on marriage to fix your problems, okay, focus on fixing your problems first. Focus on fixing your problems. Do the work. Wallahi, you will have a better, uh, satisfying, um, intimate relationship when you come into the marriage and you've done the work and you've come in um, with the right intentions um, and you're causing justice to the people around you and yourself, inshallah. So that's the first one, the wrong intentions. Let's go to number two. Now, number two is marrying the wrong person. Okay, so... A lot of people who, um, subhanAllah, um, are getting divorced, they were never really married to the right person uh, to begin with. Um, so again, that's due to a lack of um, a number of things, but um, due diligence, not having done the homework as to, um, you know, that person and uh, not really having understood what to maybe even be asking that person um, to know if they are the right person. You know, this person may not share your goals, may not share some of your beliefs, may not share your vision. Okay. And that's going to all show up later on in the marriage, you know, and subhanAllah, what we've realized is that, um, that a lot of, um, you know, that it takes about a, a, you know, a year and a half to two years to really find your feet in marriage. Right. Um, so, uh, you know, yes, there's going to be the honeymoon period and the, um, you know, what comes with that and, you know, the initial engagement period. And, the, the, you know, this is a very beautiful um, period, but that's not real love. Real love uh, comes in later on. It comes in about a year and a half to two years into the marriage um, is when you will feel um, a real sense, the real sense of love and mawadda, that affection um, towards your spouse. Um so it's important um, to 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 do to do the due diligence and 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 subhanallah from amongst the um, the characteristics or from amongst the things that you need to look out for um, is maybe you know you're marrying a person who has a personality disorder um, that you didn't ask the right questions in order to um, you know to 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 ascertain whether they have any mental health issues um you know only today subhanallah um i have a, a case and um you know the 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 spouse is um very very uh, aggressive um and he's um you know divorced his wife and he's very angry and um and and the and the family um you know uh, have known about this subhanallah they've known about this um and 
you know, it's causing a lot of damage, right? So again, you know, you need to know, um, you need to know a little bit more than just the surface level about the history of your spouse. Have they gone through some sort of, um, you know, traumatic um, experience or do they have, um, you know, addictions, you know, are they, um, you know, addicted to, to anything, be it illicit substances, drugs, um, be it um, inappropriate image, images, um, are they addicted to, um, you know, I mean, there's addictions isn't just from the things that we think are addictions that could be addicted to their work, they could be addicted to exercise, they could be addicted to, um, you know, how does that going to fit in the scope of things when it comes to, you know, the marriage? Um, you know, they, there's uh, subhanAllah, you know, I get, I get, um, um, you know, uh, complaints from, from wives about, um, you know, their husband, you know, playing, you know, those, um, those games, uh, gaming or, um, you know, uh, all night, um, you know, going to sleep at four o'clock, um, you know, there are addictions when it comes to gambling, you know, and sometimes this is one, this is another very big one that we, that we see. Um, so gambling, drugs, um, inappropriate images, um, you know, all of this, you know, if this, if, if these people, if these individuals haven't done the work that they need to do um, prior to marriage, then it's most likely going to show up in marriages. I'll talk about this in a, a bit more in a moment, inshallah. Um, you know, you could be end up marrying somebody who's just very selfish, um, who, who, who could have a, um, you know, a lot of the, you know, narcissistic personality disorder traits. Um, so again, um, you know, there needs to be um, a lot of questions that are being asked um, in the courting period um, leading up to the, the marriage to really get to know your partner, inshallah. Um, I have compiled um, uh, 10 questions um, to ask your spouse or potential spouse, um, very important questions, inshallah, um, we can share them with you, um, inshallah, you can uh, download them, um, we'll, we'll work out a, a link for you later on, inshallah, a way to receive um, the 10 questions, and in my um, Muslim marriage course, um, um, I have about uh, 250 questions. And it's really, really important to be um, asking as many questions to really uh, know if there are any deal breakers. Sometimes it's only one question that is, if answered, um, it en may end up becoming a deal breaker for this marriage. Um, and, and subhanAllah, um, you know, we, we, I saw this, for example, I'll give you an interesting one um, that I can remember from the top of my head um, during, um, you know, during lockdown and during the period of, um, you know, uh, vaccinations. And you all know that there are those who are, you know, pro-vax and those who are anti-vax. And subhanAllah, there was a sister um, from the United States, um, I remember, who reached out to me and she said to me, look, I, I'm an anti-vaxxer. I don't want to uh, vax, uh, vaccinate my children, right? And, um, you know, and... And, and my family are putting pressure on me and that I should, um, you know, change my belief and my views, um, you know, and to her, that was a deal breaker to her, you know, she can't marry someone who wants to, you know, to vaccinate and, you know, that that's what her belief system is. And for her, that's a deal breaker. And we even actually saw it with, um, I saw this with couples I was counseling and, you know, the husband uh, doesn't want to vaccinate, for example, and the, the wife wants to vaccinate and, and, um, and, and then there's the children caught up in all of this and subhanAllah, who would have ever thought, but there are so many, you know, we, we all have different expectations and, 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 and I guess different needs and, and different values. Um, so it is important to really, um, you know, learn um, as much as you can about your potential um, other um, to uh, avoid later on disappointment and, um, you know, divorce, um, uh, you know, to, to ensure, you know, that you're compatible. I mean, um, so very important. I mean, there is a hadith I know that is found in Ibn Majah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, choose carefully. He said, choose carefully for your seed and marry those who are equivalent, yani, um, uh, yani compatible and give them in marriage. Um, you know, when it comes to, um, you know, getting married, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, yes, a woman is married uh, for four things. You know, yes, 
Some people marry for wealth. Some people uh, marry for family status, for her beauty, for her religion. But he said, go for the one with the religion. So that's when it comes to selecting and choosing the right person is that they have they have um, a good um, uh, good Islamic values. Um, when it comes to choosing uh, a husband, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said, إذا, إذا um, If a suitor comes to you and you are happy with his deen, with his religion and his manners, then give your daughter in marriage um, to this person. So two things here is the deen or the religion and good manners. Subhanallah, very, very important um, to look out for these two qualities, um, inshallah, when it comes to a suta. And uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, um, if you don't do this, if you don't go for the for the man who has deen, who has um, religion and has good manners, um, he said, takun fitnatun fil ard, there'll be a, a, a calamity on earth, yani, or trials on earth and widespread corruption. So this hadith is found in Sunan al-Tirmidhi. So it is important that we take heed of the prophetic um, advice. Now, two very quick, um, uh, very quick, um, inshallah ta'ala, contributors that will help you make the right choice um, for, your, um, for your future. Number one is istishara. Istishara means um, consultation that you consult um, the right people when it comes to um, inshallah um, asking about whether you're ready or whether the person that, you, you know that you want to marry maybe they have certain issues and challenges maybe you need to um, you know seek the advice of, of a third party um, that's before you make that decision um, istishara you know is, is very very powerful um, the other one is istikhara. The istikhara is about divine guidance, whereby, you know, you're you're turning to Allah and asking Him um, to basically, um, if this person is the right person, to make it happen, to to make it blessed. Um, so I, I can't stress enough the importance of istishara and istikhara. Istikhara is about you know praying two units of prayer other than fard. Um, um, of course, you pray them as you would. Pray pray any two units of prayer and then at the end of the salah after the taslim you say the dua al istikhara which you'll find in uh, in apps on you know on websites um, uh, um dua al istikhara very very important to always be seeking divine divine guidance subhanallah and allah azza wa jal may show you things through this prayer um that uh, you didn't see before or hear before now very important point each person should do their own istikhara um you don't have somebody else doing the istikhara on your behalf okay because when we look at the pronouns in the istikhara it's all about uh, astakhiruka you know, I am the one that's asking you, oh Allah. So talk to Allah Azza wa Jal. Um, and, um, you know, and, and istikhara is by no means a limited or or has any uh, direct connection with dreams. A lot of people think that it's the dream, um, you know, that, that's going to basically um, give the answer. So that's something that needs to also be corrected. Um, the third, number three, the third um, uh, uh, mistake is ignorance, you know, not having the knowledge, not having the knowledge um, about marriage, what comes with marriage, but not having the knowledge about um, what questions um, um, you know, or what knowledge you need to learn in order to be happily married and um, what areas of marriage you need to know about. You know, there's an uh, Arab uh, proverb that says, Al -jahilu adubu nafsihi, that the jahil, that the ignorant person, okay, is his own enemy. You become your own enemy, subhanAllah. Um, there was, I remember, you know, many years ago reading a um, in a journal, psychology journal, journal about um, two of the, you know, based on a study that was done, that two of the greatest contributors, okay, for a happy and for a long-lasting marriage, um, was communication and knowledge, communication and knowledge, um, and so it's really Subhanallah. I mean, when we look at, um, um, you know, the, the place of knowledge, I mean, Subhanallah, um, how much, um, what a world of difference knowledge can make 
to a relationship and understanding um, all the moving parts um, that are related to, um, to relationships. Um, so it's really, really important um, to understand, um, you know, how to communicate with your partner, um, how to have good conflict resolution. This is a big one, number one. Uh, SubhanAllah, it's one of the top three. It's one of the top three um, contributors to uh, a dysfunctional marriage or a toxic marriage is the lack of emotional um, intelligence and the lack of anger management techniques and strategies. You really, really need to learn um, how to control your anger, um, how to deal with um, the emotions of others, subhanAllah. So good conflict management, um, uh, you know, skills is really, really important. Um, you know, so that's, uh, that's one of the most, you know, I mean, the, 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 the biggest issues that I see in, in a lot of the counseling sessions is related to lack of emotional intelligence, right? Not being able to deal um, with your partners, um, or not to deal, not being able to control your own emotions or deal with your partner's emotions in a way that doesn't escalate and lead to um, abuse. Subhanallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Um, and um, so, yes, it's important. There's, there's so much knowledge that you can learn about in relationships because I guess, you know, one of the things, for example, that you want to ensure that you maintain in the relationship is the emotional connection. Um, emotional connection and physical connection, they work, you know, side by side, they work hand in hand. That, for example, when a lot of the, um, you know, especially the men that complain about the lack of, um, you know, marital intimacy, you know, bedroom intimacy, um, subhanAllah, it's, you can quickly, quickly work out that the, that that person hasn't quite understood the importance of an emotional connection with the spouse, with their wife, because at the end of the day, um, women uh, particularly find it very difficult to, to get intimate with their husband um, if there's no emotional connection, right? So um, it, it is important um, for a, a, a good intimate life, a good physical relationship that, um, you know, there is um, that there is that um, um, that emotional connection that leads to a physical connection, right? Um, you know, I guess while we're talking about this, um, two of the of the highest needs um, for any relationship is love and and respect, love and respect. But what we see is that that women um, uh, more on the side of wanting to be loved, um, and when you love your wife, when when a wife feels um, that love um, and and those um, those contributions on the part of the husband towards his wife um, and is communicating in her language of love that resonates with her, she feels respected. And when a man feels like his wife appreciates him and she's respecting him, he feels loved. So both are getting love and love and respect, but in a different way. Subhanallah. So um, you know, there's the five love languages. Um, this is a, a there's some assessments that you can do to really work out what is um, the love language of your spouse. Um, you know, so um, alhamdulillah, um, over, during the COVID period, um, I spent two years uh, recording um, my the Muslim marriage course, um, which is over, um, you know, which has over 110 videos, short videos and really comprehensive. And I cover the, the, the five love languages and I cover human needs and I cover values and personality types. And, um, you know, uh, we talk about um, all of the knowledge that, that, you know, that spouses really need to be in a happy and a healthy and a thriving um, marriage. So once again, um, you know, we're talking here about being knowledgeable and learning about all the different, um, you know, aspects that can create that emotional connection and that physical connection. And subhanAllah, the world becomes your oyster when you're in a happy marriage, because much of your happiness after marriage is going to come from your marriage. Um, so again, subhanAllah, when you, when you do the, the, the when you do the, um, the due diligence and you, and you learn and you unlearn and you relearn about what relationships about, not what probably you saw in your, maybe, um, maybe in your parents' relationship or in a, that could have been a quite a toxic relationship and um or you or you heard about or read about or you know um you know that's that's you know that that's probably your window into relationships and it could be a um a very very yani subhanallah um 
uh, damaging subhanallah to you and to to your to your partner and to your children and to your future generation and you know if you don't get this right and 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 you know your children end up um being traumatized by your ex you know by their parents experience um this could lead to what the um scholars they call um you know generational trauma or ancestral trauma so it is important that um, you know, you get it right, subhanAllah, for you, for the sake of your future generation, right? And for the sake of the rewards from Allah Azza wa Jal that you're going to get. Um, so, you know, I do encourage um, doing any um, any type of marriage counseling, pre-marriage counseling, pre-marriage course, um, highly recommended. And there's studies out there um, to, to that really show, um, you know, how um, impactful and effective um, these courses are. There's one study that I came across that revealed that couples who um, participate in some form of premarital program, they experience a 31% increase, 31% increase in marital success over those who don't so subhanallah al jahilu adu nafsihi again the ignorant is his own enemy um there was one uh, other study that i came across um from one marriage researcher um and his name was dr david olson um and he said that um you know in, in his study that 85 percent of couples that completed okay you know um um some uh, form of uh, marriage, um, you know, program or marriage, uh, uh, any yani course, um, they stayed together. Eighty-five percent stayed together. Subhanallah. Um, so again, very, very important. Inshallah. I'll move on to number four, um, and number four is about not being ready for marriage. So again, being hasty in getting married, and they're not really ready for marriage. Okay. Um, so I guess maybe the question is, how do you know if you're ready? Well, there's so many um, questions and boxes that you need to tick. Um, so number one, for example, you need to understand that with marriage comes uh, rights. You know, with marriage comes um, uh, obligations, right? Um, so do you know your? Do you know what are the rights of your spouse, which are your obligations? Okay, you need to learn about that. Um, uh, so that's very important. And then are you even ready to fulfill those rights? You know, they could be financial rights. They could be, um, you know, um, um, you know, all of those rights and those uh, and those uh, maybe ob obligations that are that are part and parcel of marriage, especially from um, Islamic Sharia. Um, again, um, you know, do you, you know, are you aware of the concept of expectations that, you know, your spouse is going to have expectations of you? You're going to have expectations of, um, you know, your spouse. OK, um, you know, do you understand um, the concept of gender differences that males and females are different? As Allah says, and the male is not like the female. So, yes, you need to understand um, what that could mean. I mean, you know, I learned a great deal when I when I was researching and studying, um, you know, uh, gender differences. And, you know, um, I remember many, many years ago, my one of my first books was um, the book by Dr. Gary Chapman. Uh, men are from Mars, women are from Venus, or uh, the book by the Peas family, Why Men Don't Listen and Women Can't Read Maps. SubhanAllah, when I was reading these books, I learned a lot about me. I learned a lot about why I do what I do. And I, I, I figured a lot of things out about me. I figured a lot of things about women and the opposite gender, my wife, SubhanAllah. So yes, it is important. Um, the more of this knowledge that you have, it's just... Um, it allows you to diffuse many, many marriage-related marriage issues. You know, um, you need to learn about what, you know, you need to identify what are your deal breakers before um, getting married. Um, you know, um, like I said before, um, uh, also, um, you know, learning about emotional intelligence that we spoke about before, you need to become the righteous person that you need to become if you are after a righteous person. So subhanAllah, you ask, 
you know, many of the brothers, for example, um, you know, what kind of a woman, what kind of a wife do you want? You know, she has to be righteous and she's praying and she's a good wife and she's respectful. Well, I say to him, brother, she's going to be looking for the same thing. Like, are you a righteous person? Are you going to be, um, you know, respectful? And are you going to be that person? Because the person that you're looking for with high qualities right? That person is also looking for a person of high qualities, right? SubhanAllah. So I guess there's a lot of um, uh, points you need to, to consider um, to know whether you are ready um, to get married. Now, marriage is a huge commitment, right? You know, it's a serious contract. And Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, wa that, um, uh, that, that they, the wife, has have, have taken from you a serious covenant, a contract it's you know when i get when i do the marriages you know as a celebrant you know you know there's the wali there's the there's the two witnesses there's the mahar there's ijab there's kabul there's signing um there's registration it's serious we we, we enter marriage for life subhanallah um you know and and we need to take marriage very seriously and do the work that needs to be done i'm going to quickly move on to point number five inshallah, so we can allow a lot of time for the questions and answers um, session. So um, again, from a number five is having unrealistic expectations, right? Again, um, you can have expectations, but are your expectations uh, realistic or are they false expectations that, um, you know, a, a lot of expectations that people create for themselves are going to be um, um, uh, disappointments later on down the track. So I guess maybe you want to, you know, check in with someone regarding your expectations and and your vision and what you're looking for in the marriage. Maybe it needs to be recalibrated. Maybe it needs to be realigned and readjusted. And Subhanallah, some of the the expectations that you, that you come across, um, you know. And at, what I've what I've realized is that at, at the heart of much disappointment um, in marriage are failed expectations. So I've got a list um, in my marriage course of about 15 uh, reasons why, um, you know, couples end up getting divorced. Right. And subhanAllah, um, um, what I've what I've realized is that if I had to give a heading to all of those headings and all of those reasons why um, uh, couples end up getting divorced, um, be it um, you know lack of trust or, or trust issues, um, um, uh, be it financial issues, in-laws issues, um, be it uh, lack of commitment to the success of the marriage, um, you know, and the list goes on. But if I had to give a heading to all of those headings, it'd be failed expectations. That at the end of the day, you failed. I had an expectation that I can trust you. I had an expectation that um, that you will spend on me, or I had an expectation that um, you know you 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 would stand up for me um, when your parents um, you know caused any injustice towards me, um, or I had an expectation that you were going to spend quality time with me, not just always out fishing or out with the um, you know with the friends or socializing and so on and so forth. So again. Um, expectations uh, play a massive role in 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 creating disappointment and resentment and 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 anger and potentially divorce. So um, it's important that there's good communication um, around expectations, okay, around your needs, around your values, around um, um, you know boundaries. So there needs to be good communication of what your expectations are, inshallah. And I mean, one thing you have to also keep in mind, um, you, there needs to be flexibility when you get married. Um, you have to understand that um, when you get married, you're actually marrying three people. You're actually marrying the person who you wish they are. You know, you wish that your partner is going to be like this or like that, or they're going to treat you in this way, right? Um, or that way. So you're marrying three people. You're marrying the person who you wish they are, okay, or, or you think they are. You're marrying the person who um, they really are, okay, which doesn't really match up um, to a large extent or to some extent with the, the wishful thinking um, partner that you want. And then you you, you forget that you're also going to marry a person who they become now that they are married to you. So one, one thing I, I need... Um, 
um, couples to understand and future couples, inshallah, um, to understand um, is that um, so, um, you know, you're both um, you're both coming into this relationship, right? So you're both coming in with your expectations, with your needs, with your values, with your personality types, right? And um, subhanAllah, your insecurities and your weaknesses and your strengths, you know, um, you're coming in. And so you're coming in to form this in a very unique bond, this very unique relationship. And because of this relationship, this relationship is going to recreate you to some extent. Now, the example that I often give um, is that, you know, um, when I got married to my wife, um, I remember, um, you know, I love my dining. I love um, trying different types of food. Um, alhamdulillah, I'm, um, you know, being blessed. Uh, I do many marriages of different culture and um, I get given all these food, right? And I, and I love trying different, you know, cultural foods, right? Um, and subhanAllah, my wife is not big on, on variety when it comes to food. And she wasn't very, she's not very big on going out and, you know, dining out and things like that. And subhanAllah, so, um, you know, me being married to her, when I got married to her, my dining experiences has changed to a, to a, to a large extent, right? And so because, um, um, you know, I'm married to her, um, that there's, there's, there is now, you know, it's different, right? My dining experience and, and even the food at home is different to mum's cooking, you know, for example. Um, and then I, ironically, because I bring all this food home and all these yummy cakes and um, desserts and what have you, um, she ends up eating it. Um, she ends up putting on weight. So because now she's married to me, she puts on weight and now she's got to work harder to, to keep the weight off and not, you know, and to resist some of this food that just in front of her. So anyway, what I'm saying is that um, when I when I speak to a lot of couples and they say to me, you know, we've got all of these problems, you know, we've got all of these, um, you know, issues. And I said to them, look, if you are married to somebody else, you won't have these problems. You will just have a different set of problems. Um, so subhanAllah, um, we need to we need to um, really understand um, you know the 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 importance of, of of expectations and maybe having some um, maybe you've got unrealistic expectations maybe you need to communicate your expectations maybe you need to form a new blueprint um, inshallah ta'ala um, let's go on to the last one number six that I said um, um, we've got six mistakes and six reasons um, why um, many um, uh, couples end up in divorce. And the last one and that I want to focus on is unresolved trauma. Yeah. So that's a very sad one. And this is, this is really, really big from what, um, from what I see um, that there's a lot of, um, you know, um, individuals coming into uh, marriage with unresolved, um, with unresolved trauma. And, you know, there's a, there's a saying that I really, um, subhanAllah, uh, find amazing. And that saying is, if you don't heal what hurts you, you will bleed all over those who never cut you, right? How powerful is that? If you don't heal what hurts you, you will bleed all over those who never cut you. So what we are seeing is um, we're seeing individuals coming into relationships and they have um, been traumatized, they have insecurities, they have, um, you know, um, challenges. Um, and whenever things, um, and, um, things go difficult in the relationship, they might turn to um, addictions to, to self-soothe or to self-regulate, or it's their familiarity, it's their emotional home, subhanAllah. And, um, and, you know, like, you know, I've got, you know, dealing with cases whereby, you know, the husband is gambling um, and he's gambling away, you know, the family home, subhanAllah. Um, we have cases of, 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 uh, of, of drug abuse or inappropriate images or, um, you know, there's so, there's, um, you know, they're, they're, or, you know, just not being able to control their anger. That's a really big one, as I said earlier, um, and just becoming abusive. So I think it's, it is important um, if before you get married that you do the work and, and, and um, that you do see someone now, particularly a lot of the, the sisters find it a lot more easier to get help, um, but the brothers um, find it a lot more challenging. And we need to encourage the brothers um, who have um, these challenges to really um, 
you know, ensure that they do um, they do get the work done that they that needs to be done, um, so that they can have a better quality marriage in the future, and they and better better quality children and better quality dunya and better quality akhirah um, hereafter. Um, so again, I can't emphasize enough the importance of doing the work regarding unresolved issues um, and that there's nothing wrong with um, seeking um, therapy, but seeking it through the right people. And this is another challenge that we have in our communities um, where some Muslims, they may go to um, a, um, a psychologist that, that speaks about um, doing things that are un-Islamic. Um, that's a, that's a challenge. Um, that's, you know, that's, that's un-Islamic, that's haram or, um, you know, doing things that are haram. So, um, I, I do encourage reaching out to the right people. If you can find, sometimes it's not just the one psychologist or the one person. It, you might need a team around you between maybe a sheikh, a psychologist, or someone who has the knowledge of both, um, you know, human psychology um, um, and um, Islamic knowledge, inshallah ta'ala. So, you know, that's, I, I just wanted to sh sort of share with you these um, six, I guess, um, you know, common mistakes that um, many um, individuals they make before they even get married, be it the wrong intentions, um, marrying the wrong person, you know, the lack of due diligence, um, uh, be, be it ignorance and not having the knowledge of what, how to sustain a healthy marriage. Um, number four, we said not, you're not ready for marriage. Um, and then you enter marriage and you cause a lot of damage. Um, number five, uh, we said having unrealistic expectations and number six, unresolved trauma. So I hope and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you um, and your loved ones to marry, um, inshallah, in the way that is going to lead to a very satisfying and a healthy and a, a thriving marriage. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Uh, thank you very much, Ustaz Bilal. Uh, may Allah reward you for your time uh, and effort and energies, inshallah. Uh, a lot of points to consider and to think about. Uh, we do have a lot of uh, questions, so I'll uh, jump straight into them. Uh, and hopefully, um, you'll be able to cover all of them. There's a, there's a fair few. Uh, so maybe we can keep the answers uh, brief, but inshallah, to um, uh, but answer the question as well. Uh, I'll start off with a light question, uh, just to um, calm down the mood a bit. Uh, you mentioned a lot of cultural food. Uh, which cultural food did you find the best? Oh, well, being Lebanese. <laughs> I mean, you can't go past the Lebanese food. Uh, subhanAllah. Uh, but honestly, the, every culture always has a dish that is amazing. Um, one of my favorite dishes is from the Afghan um, community, from the Afghans. They have something called qabuleh. And um, and uh, very interestingly, I've been doing a lot of marriages between um, Afghans and Lebanese, and um, uh, you know, um, you know, I say, you know, don't fight over qabule or tabule. Um, <laughs> you know, they're they're both they're both uh, you know they're both uh, yummy in, in in a different way. <laughs> well, I'm I'm from an Afghan background, so I'm very happy to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Um, okay, so the first uh, first question was in regards to uh, getting to know someone. You mentioned it's very important before marriage. Uh, obviously, we know Islamically there are uh, restrictions on how much you know the the genders can interact with each other. So uh, how uh, how can you know someone uh, to a good extent? You know, if you haven't done nikah and you know you can't see them one on one, like what are some of the practical tips to actually get to know someone uh, before marriage? Um, of course, going through the front door, going, you know, there's nothing wrong with getting to know someone and by, you know, visiting their, their parents and, and sitting in a common, um, common area, uh, room, um, where you can, you can talk to a potential spouse, ask them all the right questions. Now that's not always um, the case for many individuals. There are unique cases such as the cases of reverts, for example. So in that case, um, getting to know somebody, um, through, um, the Islamic organization in your community or the mosque and speaking to the imam about coming to um, um, to a to a room in, uh, on that on that uh, facility or that organization in that organization where you can really um, you know get to know each other and talk to each other. Um, um, you may also um, opt for the option of finding a um, a, a married uh, couple 
that's that you know that's a, a friends of, friends of yours that could help um, by um, hosting you at their place. You know, every now and again for you both to be getting to know each other. Um, that's always going to be um, safe and not leading to any um, uh, sort of haram or un-Islamic um, be- behaviors. Okay, Jazakumullah khair. Thank you for that. Uh, the next uh, question. One other one, sorry, that I wanted to, um, to uh, sometimes um, if, you, if you really need to chat with each other and like, let's say visiting is not an option. Um, what, one of the things that we've done in the past is we've had like sort of imams or, or you know, certain figures in the community or once again, maybe like an elder um, it could, doesn't have to be an imam, but it could be an elder. And they set up like a group, like a WhatsApp group. And then both of you could be chatting and the imam or the, the elder um, or a parent could be there um, in the WhatsApp group where you can now communicate and, 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 and you know, um, where there's a third party there. So again, uh, there's no room for shaitan to, to, to play games. Inshallah. Thank you very much. Uh, the next question is um, uh, in regards to istikhara. So the question says, say that istikhara was a no based on a third party performing it and you are married uh, and you married that person. Is there a way for the marriage to work? Uh, note that we performed our own istikhara and didn't get any bad feeling. So it's about a third person doing istikhara and, and they got, um, I guess, n- not the best feeling. Is it still okay to go ahead? It's It's not so much, I guess, the feeling. I mean, with istikhara is it's about number one, you doing the istikhara, okay? Um, like I said, the pronouns. If we look at the isti- istikhara prayer, um, Allahumma inni astakhiruka bi ilmika wa astaqdiruka bi qudratika wa asaluka. I am doing all the asking. I am asking you, Ya Allah. So number one, let's always stick to the first party, right? First person. Um, and it, secondly, once you do it. And of course, you would do istikhara after you've done most of most of the work, most of the groundwork. Like you've actually asked all the right questions and all the questions that you need to be asking to ensure that this person is um, yani the right person. If that person isn't the right person, if you've already, um, there's been deal breakers, you've heard things, learned things, you're not comfortable with the person, then why proceed to istikhara prayer? Right, istikhara prayer is once you've done the due diligence, you go to istikhara prayer. So really, you're pretty much ready to make the next step. You're pretty much ready. You've done all the due diligence you possibly can, um, or most of the due diligence, and you, you know the istikhara is being done. And just to see any more signs. Now, the signs can be things that the responses that the person says to you. Um, there could be things that you see in their behavior, things that you hear from third parties about this person. That's that's the essence of the istikhara. Then once you do your istikhara and still there's no red flags, there's no bad signs um, and you've done all the due diligence, you proceed. Okay. And now after you proceed, if you find yourself having problems in the marriage, then go and get the help that you need to, to deal with those issues at hand, because you've already done that istikhara. Now there's, there's some challenges. There's some, some hardships that you're facing that, 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 that may well be needed for this marriage to be to go to greater heights. Um, you're not marrying an angel, right? You're not marrying you know, somebody who's perfect. So I think we just need to really, I think, revisit um, istikhara and istishara and how it really works, inshallah, in reality. Uh, thank you very much. I guess that question was, uh, uh, the, the main point was a third party performing istikhara and, and, and it was a no from them. Sh- should they just ignore that? The question is like, what's, what does it mean by a no from them? A no. On what basis is it a no? On what basis is it a no? Is it a no? Why? Because of the feeling? Because of, uh, you know, I, I, that, that doesn't work in, in, in how, istikhara doesn't work that way. Istikhara means there is clear signs. And if, if that person did the istikhara and it was, a, let's say there's this no, whatever that no is, right? Um, then, um, um, okay, so what's the issue now? We've got, okay, we've got some marital issues. All right, well, we've done the istikhara. You're already married now. Okay, well, let's let's work on fixing the problem. Okay, the problem is the problem. Let's work on that problem now. Jazakumullah khair, thank you. Uh, the next question Wait. is, uh, in regards to dua, uh, can you make dua in your own language when it comes to istikhara, or does it have to be in the Arabic language? Allah Azza wa Jal, he understands all the languages. Uh, it's better to say dua when you speak to Allah, when you make dua, 
make dua, there's the prophetic dua that you make, which are very powerful, and learn the meaning of those prophetic duas um, that, that bring about blessing and barakah. But then there's you, you're asking certain things, you know, talk to Allah because the dua should be said with sincerity and a, and a, and, and a present mind, okay? Um, you need to know what you are asking Allah Azza wa Jal for. Say it in your language and say it from your heart. Say it with a present mind um, and say it in a lot of the times that dua is highly answered between Asr and Maghrib on Fridays, third part of the night, between Adhan and Iqama during prayers and the other times, inshallah. Thank you very much. Uh, the next question is, how can one understand if they have generational trauma in a relationship can it be healed during the relationship? So with regards, if you know that you've got um, a, um, a, a trauma, if, you're, if you have a mental health issue, um, and if you feel there's something not right, then um, I urge you to see, um, to speak to, like I said, um, a, 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 prefer, a prefer, preferably a Muslim, um, a Muslim uh, a psychologist and a sheikh to get you know, the two opinions there. Um, psychologists can do assessments and they can assess you and they can work out, um, you know, if you've got any issues. Um, sometimes what happens and what this is from my experience in, in, is that, and, and this is from my studies, is that um, a person could be traumatized and not know um, where that is coming from. Um, sometimes you would have been traumatized as an infant or um, and subhanAllah, you have no recollection of why you were like this. I'll give you an example. It could be separation anxiety. And you could have been separated from your parents when you were a baby. And you were traumatized because of that. But you don't really remember that down, you know, in the future. So trauma, um, um, uh, a lot of the times it's the behavior. So if if your spouse, if your, pretend, if your future spouse, or if your spouse at the moment is behaving in a way that's not normal to the average person, the average person in a relationship doesn't behave that way, then there's a good chance that there is a, 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 um, a, a, a there is trauma that needs to be um, attended to. Now, one thing that I've learned from a lot of psychologists is that that to a large extent, you don't heal trauma, you manage trauma, you learn how to manage trauma when it comes in. Um, what are things that you can say? What are things that you can do? Um, of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can heal anything. But if to a large extent, according to the studies and according to the research that um, that you need to be able to manage, you can manage your trauma if you get the right help, inshallah. Bismillah, thank you. Uh, the next question is on uh, personality disorders. So you touched on personality disorders affecting marriages. Uh, I am currently going through this with my wife and I feel that it will be the end of our marriage because I'm a calm person by nature and she gets angry in a split second and I don't like that side of her. Um, I guess the question, uh, there was no specific question, but overall, what's your thoughts on that? Um, like I said, um, very, very common um, um, when it comes to couples and it comes to anger management, um, not having um, um, uh, the filter to control your emotions or the, um, and I guess it's like, it, it's something that we need to also learn and exercise. It's like a muscle that needs to be strengthened and exercised. Um, you need to be ready to put your hand up and say, hey, I do have anger management issues um, based on my history and um, I need I need help. And, and I think um, not getting the help is going to um, do your health, your physical health um, damage, um, you know, and do your, your marriage damage and do your intimate life damage and, you know, um, get the help that um, that you need. Don't be afraid to learn about anger management um, strategies and techniques. Watch some videos together. Get some counseling. Get some one-on-one. -on -one. um, but honestly, you'll just feel liberated and you'll feel a lot more calm. You want to be in a. Um, you always do want to be in a very tranquil state. You don't want to be fight or flight um, ongoingly within your marriage. Um, um, so what I normally I, and a lot of the times what I say to couples is that if you know he's sensitive. For example, be just be a bit more mindful of your tone, of your of your manners towards him, because he's very very sensitive. Um, so um, so we get a little bit of work from let's say the wife in this instance, and then from the husband, um, we we say to him um, that you need to um, also work on your um, 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 
populating a, an emotional intelligence um, toolbox um, where you put in all the strategies and tools that you need. So when the time comes and you're angry, you're able um, to um, to um, you know diffuse the situation without it escalating. You know and um, subhanallah, we have a lot of strategies, whether it's in the Quran, like um, you know, repel that which is is bad with, with ahsan, with better, um, and 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 subhanallah, how that can lead to um, um you know a peaceful outcome. We have the hadith, la taghdab, don't become angry. We have saying a'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim We have the morning and the evening adhkar. Highly recommend that you do the morning and evening supplications. They will also protect your marriage. They're going to protect, um, they're going to just you know make you a lot more, yani subhanallah, karma, uh dhikrullah azza wa jal. You know, all of this, it all it's it all it's all gonna add up inshallah ta'ala. Thank you very much. And most certainly the, the spiritual life is is very important as well. Uh, the next question is uh things like addictions can be hidden during the engagement period, even from people's own families. Could you give any examples of questions that could help uncover any potential addictions or personality disorders when you when you when you're getting to know someone for marriage? You can be direct. I mean, you know, number one, be direct. Uh, you know, uh, have you watched? Um, you know, you know, in more recent times, or you know, are you engaged in watching um, inappropriate content? Um, you could um, ask about whether they take, um, you know, uh, um, any illicit uh, substances. Um, of course, uh, maybe if they um, if they're going to hide it from you, um, then you need to maybe ask. Um, you know. Do, do you know ask maybe the family if they can you know ask you know um it, it, it's a difficult one because um I, I know a case whereby I had a case not long ago and the brother was into um recreational um, drugs and he hit it very very well um and subhanallah um uh subhanallah you know some months uh, into the relationship the wife discovered it and um, it created um, a lot of problems. Um, and, and he kept on saying, oh, that's Sianana, I'm not doing it anymore. But he's already addicted. And, you know, he finally came around, mind you. He finally came around and did the work, but it was too late. She was checked out. Family got involved. When family gets involved, it becomes a lot more difficult to resuscitate. Family sort of take control of the situation. Um, so I think... Um, you, you just need to number one, um, the istikhara is important, as you said. So Allah can maybe uh, bless you, bless you to say what's right or to see what's what you need to see. Um, top of my head, asking very specific questions right now. I, I can't think of any specifically, but you need to ask directly. Maybe ask the people that know that person. Um, you know, get some heads up um, about. Um, any sort of um, addictions or personality disorders. Get some references about this person. Uh, thank you very much, Sheikh. Jazakallah uh, khair. One oh, second. Yeah. Um, uh, what's the uh, next question? What's the number one reason for divorce from your own personal experience? I guess um, there's, like I said, the, the main one would be around, um, around it's, it's very hard for me to say the number one, but if I had to, you know, um, choose a number one, it'd be somewhere between, um, um, it would be infidelity is there, infidelity, um, you know, and especially in this day and age, um, infidelity um, could be, you know, chatting with the opposite gender online. Um, infidelity is up there. Um, lack of emotional intelligence, being very selfish and very, um, um, what's the word, like, uh, you know, always in a state of, of you know, ang gets angry very quickly and very hard to be around. Um, and then we have in-laws. Um, in-laws um, and, and family interference plays a big role in, uh, so family interference, uh, infidelity, um, and uh, I guess, um, you know, and, and, and that, that notion of having trauma whereby you end up going to do haram things, uh, such as gambling, such as drugs, such as um, inappropriate content, um, every time you, you're falling down and out, um, you know, so I guess if I had to 
give three, they they would be up. They would be up there. Uh, that's uh, that's great. Thank you. I'm sure I'm sure there's a lot more in your mind, but uh, <laughs> sure that you've shared at least those three. Alhamdulillah. Um, the next one is uh, I've heard uh, having a, a prenuptial agreement is allowed in Islam, but it is not commonly practiced culturally. I'm guessing that's, that's the prenup. How we may ask for this without offending a potential spouse? Um, it's it's um, it, it shouldn't if that's what you want if that's part of your um, expectations is to have a prenuptial agreement um, or to have a contract in place and have conditions that are um, Islamically sound. There's no harm in that. These are called you know shurut, um, and um, um, especially if they give you security. Um, um, because you're looking for that security, there could be certain things that you've heard or, or that's made you insecure. Um, the thing with prenuptial agreements, from a from a legal perspective, um, I think they they don't really hold much water after you have children. Um, so you have to like maybe get some more legal advice about how much do they really hold. Maybe look do some due diligence into if you're looking at it from a legal perspective. If you're doing it from an Islamic perspective, then yeah, you'd really just write up and you both come to an agreement regarding um, you know what you know what it is. Now, common common um, conditions um, uh, from amongst the common ones is maybe for the husband. Um, that if the husband, in the event that the husband um, marries another woman, you know, uh, and 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 she becomes a co-wife, um, then um, the the wife has the right to for the marriage to be annulled, um, and he agrees to that. Um, that's a that's a common one that I find myself. It's not very common. When I say common, it's like it's one of the common conditions, but it's not common for couples to include that in the marriage contract, right? Another one would be travel that, for example, the, um, you know, the, the wife or, or um, doesn't want, because the wife should be following her husband where he goes and like goes for work or travel to different parts of the world or cities. And it could be that, um, um, she, she may, she, his wife may be looking after her elderly parents and doesn't want to be relocated. Um, she might put that in the contract. Um, so yes, you can put, and if you, whatever, you know, just because they're in the contract, it doesn't mean that, that yes, the, the husband has it, has a, a, or the, you know, the husband, um, these are usually the conditions are for the husband to commit to these, to these things. Right. Um, and, and just because they're in the contract, it doesn't mean that the contract is now, you know, um, waterproof and that the, the the husband may not end up violating these conditions. He, he may he may violate them. It's not right Islamically. He should honor, he should honor the, the conditions. Um, but in the event he doesn't honor the conditions, then the marriage can be annulled um, through a Muslim judge or um, an Islamic tribunal. Uh, thank you very much, Sheikh. Um... Uh, it, this is in regards to time. So, is there a recommended time to get to know someone to make sure it doesn't it doesn't drag on? Uh, perhaps, perhaps they mean be before the nikah. I'm guessing that before the contract. I guess um, the main thing is that is 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 all about really getting knowing what you want, um, knowing if this person shares your vision. Um, uh, is there attraction? So, from amongst the the things that you want to look out for. Um, number one is, are you attracted to this person? So I've had um, um, cases whereby divorce takes place because the husband, he marries a woman, she's got deen, she's got akhlaq, but he's not attracted to her. And he thought that, that that's fine. But later on, he discovers and that's not fine. Okay. So it's more so, it almost more so happens from the husband not being attracted to um, uh, a wife, especially that men are more visual. Um, more so than women. That's not to say that women aren't visual um, in wanting to marry an a man that, that they're attracted to. But um, so attraction is very, very important. That's one thing you don't want to compromise that you are attracted to that person. Um, number two um, is their deen, um, that, that, that you ensure that they, they have, um, you know, the, the, the deen that you're looking for. Uh, number three is manners. And number four, in the case of a man, that he is hardworking. Um, in the case of a, of a woman, um, is she prepared to be? Um, you know, what, what's you know, what is what is she prepared to be? Is she prepared to be a traditional wife, or is she coming in as a partnership? And um, um, and I guess 
you know, the, this, this sort of community, once you can sort of establish all of the answer, tick all these boxes and, and you've given it, you know, some, uh, you, you've you've looked at also this person and how they're interacting with other people. How does that person speak to their parents is a big indicator how they're most likely going to be with you. Um, how does that person, you know, you want to sort of test them out and just sort of observe them in different contexts to see their true colors come out. Because, you know, if you're just sitting around in, on, in a lounge room or in, a, in an office and getting to know each other, you're not really seeing their true colors and their true identity and you're not seeing them in action or under pressure. Right. So, um, you know, that's something to, um, you know, be mindful of inshallah. So, uh, you know, that, like I said, once all of that, all, once you've sort of seen them in different, um, in different contexts, you've got a, quite a few reference points um, to say, yeah, I've seen this person, how they several times, how they uh, interact with, with, with family and relatives and friends and how they, um, and, 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 you know, you've ticked all the other boxes, um, then inshallah, you do your istikhara, then your istikhara, bismillah. Uh, this, this next question, uh, uh, you, you might want to answer it privately. You can re recommend it to the, uh, to the questioner. However, maybe you can shed light some base, uh, some general guidelines. So the question says, I'm actually seeing a Christian. Uh, he, he is a very, he is very devoted to his faith. Uh, he believes in God and has good adab. Uh, he knows that in order for us to go on, he needs to convert uh, to Islam. Uh, but he is not ready. He says he needs time. He cannot see himself converting at this moment. Um, but he does not know uh, about the future. I'm guessing whether he will do it or not. Uh, he has gone to many Islamic courses and talked to elders on Islam. Uh, I still feel very hopeful about our future. Uh, this is my uh, intuition. So should I wait or should this be a red flag? So it's around a uh, sister marrying a Christian. I mean, the Islamic position is a Muslim woman can only be married to a Muslim man. So he does need to revert genuinely. Um, SubhanAllah, um, you know, and, and I have I had a case only um, very recently. Um, and the, the sister married a, a, a man who reverted. And um, SubhanAllah, it's been now a number of years. And He's never prayed, never practiced. Um, so, I, you know, they had a counseling session with me. And then when I um, I asked him, I go, did you revert for the sake of the religion, for the sake of Allah, or did you revert um, for the sake of this marriage? He goes, no, I reverted for the sake of marriage and be, for, the, for her sake because I love her, right? I go, okay. Um, and, so, um, and so now, years later, she's trying to, you know, um, you know and there's so much emotional connection um, she's trying to, um, you know, save this marriage, right? Um, so the, the one thing that that's very, very dangerous is once you start to have that emotional connection um, with someone, it's going to be a struggle. So be very, very careful. Um, don't get emotionally connected um, when, when, the, when the person hasn't satisfied the Islamic requirements. Um, you, you, you're making it difficult on yourself. Um, it's not impossible. Um, you might want to, you know, um, I would suggest now that you've, you know, you've, you've guided this person to all the resources that they need to become, um, inshallah, a Muslim, I think it's time for you to um, put your trust in Allah to walk away and say, look, the Islamic position is I can't be with you um, unless, um, uh, unless you, you, you genuinely become Muslim. And if you do genuinely become Muslim, um, you know where to reach out to me, you know, to, um, and may, do this for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, do this for the sake of your future generation. I've seen many, many, um, children, families get divided over this issue. Children become lost. Um, it's so important, wallahi, that this person that your potential spouse, if, if he's non-Muslim or she's non-Muslim in the future, whoever it might be, um, that they genuinely embrace Islam, that they genuinely embrace Islam. Um, th there'll be no barakah. Where's the barakah going to be in the marriage? You know, how are your children going to turn out? What are you going to, you want somebody, subhanAllah, that really shares your, your vision. Go to Umrah with, have suhoor with, have iftar with, um, go to hajj with, uh, pray with, go to the masjid with, um, read Quran with. You know how that is that is just so exciting if um to experience that um with you know with your with your significant other. 
Uh, very good answer, uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, questions, so I will be selective. Apologies if your question doesn't get um, asked. Uh, we are close to the end of the program. Uh, so I might lump some questions together that have similar themes. Uh, this one is in regards to uh, meeting online, Ustaz. Uh, so do you have any advice for partners meeting online? Uh, we met online and have kept things as halal as possible and want to involve parents, but they are hesitant due to the taboo of meeting online. And there was a few other questions about uh, meeting up online as well. Um, what, it, once you do meet online, you need to quickly meet offline, like with your with your parents' blessing. Like, um, you know, you, you don't want to continue that because that the, shay, the shaitan here is the third. Um, and... Um, you know, we've seen we've seen where where this where this can go to. There's been so many stories of, especially from these um, matrimony websites and people who um, who I've spoken to who've used these websites and told me about the fitna that's involved and how things can get um, um, out of hand. And some people are very, um, you know, just very clever with their ways um, in in in. In luring you and, and meeting up with you and, and things like that, and so I, I I would say that if you do meet them online, um, then meet them online with the blessing of your wali if you're the sister. Um, I think that's going to be a lot more healthier and and the proper way of doing it. And um, you know, tell the person, hey, if you're interested, this is my father's number. You know man up and knock on the door and come and meet me there and you know we'll talk and take it from there um alhamdulillah islam has given us um you know beautiful teachings and boundaries um that protect us and protect our identity and protect our relationships um and that's just a short answer inshallah inshallah um so this question is in regards to unresolved issues before marriage uh what are we supposed to do if our spouse had unresolved issues before marriage and it is only brought to light after marriage. And even after they are brought to light, they don't plan on solving them. And it leads to us being emotionally abused to a very critical extent. Number one, support your spouse. Try and do, use different strategies, different intervention. Um, um, you know, try and find um, try and find um, individuals who can um, um, who can come in and mediate or intervene. Um, so that they can get help, inshallah. Really, you know, you know, use different strategies to get them to cooperate. Right? Um, I highly recommend that. Um, it it could be, um, you know, parents, uh, elders, um, community leaders, um, you know, um, and and just reaching out to them. Um, I, I think if you do that right, if you do that with sincerity, with ikhlas, and you ask Allah to help you, and you're patient. And you know that, subhanAllah, uh, you know, a, a lot of us are our own enemies and we, we don't know what's good for us. And, you know, we just, if we can put this person in contact with the right people, inshallah, they will get the help that they need. And if there's an complete and utter unwillingness and they're not prepared to do the work and everything is failing and it's impacting um you know, you or the kids or the children, then yes, you you need an exit strategy. You need you can't stay in a relationship that's toxic. You can't stay. You're doing you you're actually causing you you now you are part of the problem. You are a part of this problem. Not only the person who's not getting help, but for you not walking away from this relationship, this is being part of the problem. Um, um, because now there's darar and the, and the Prophet sallallahu he said la darar wa la dirar that there be no harming or reciprocating harm, you know, anything that brings about harm. So, and, and a lot of the times, if you, if you walk away respectfully and say, look, I respect myself and my children, and I'm walking away until you get the help. A lot of the times that person, that's when they'll get, they'll actually get the help. And I've seen this a lot whereby, you know, the, the, the wife and, and, you know, is being abused for example, in this case, and I'm remembering a case and the husband, and then she puts her foot down once and for all, and she walks out and to her parents' house. And then he goes, oh my God, I'm alone. I'm lonely. And then he reaches out and believe me, you see grown men cry. And then he will, he does the work. He actually does the work. So he's a saying that I always like to say, the more that you tolerate 
you know, in terms of tolerating abusive behavior, the more that you tolerate, the more that you're teaching your spouse how to treat you. You are part of the problem by tolerating it. Don't tolerate nonsense. You've got standards. You've got values. You've got um, Islamic, you know, Islamic teachings that we abide by, right? Divorce is, a, um, is disliked, but it's not haram. And divorce is a solution to a problem. Divorce is not a problem, okay? And sometimes we use divorce um, for, um, for a person to, um, for their partner to actually get the help that they need. And mm -hmm. we've seen this a lot. Uh, very, very good answers and tips. Thank you very much, Sheikh. Uh, a couple of questions revolve around uh, brothers and sisters trying to find uh, the spouse, but but more so sisters are struggling to find uh, spouses for marriage. So I guess any tips on on that and uh, some practical tips on on how and where, especially for sisters. It is it is very challenging in this day and age. Um, um, you know, we have very busy lifestyles. We're not really interacting with each other um, in, in real life. Um, so I do encourage um, being, being volunteering, um, being part of Islamic, your Islamic community, being part of an Islamic organization, you know, out of sight, out of mind. You know, people need to see you. They need to see your true colors. They need to see who you are. They need to fall in love with you. Um, and then subhanAllah, um, you know, I know from myself, I've got a few brothers around me that come to me for certain, you know, advice, or I teach them or I mentor them. And because I'm always seeing them and they're around me, um, um, as you know, if somebody asks me like, hey, do you um, have a brother in mind, um, you know, for this sister, um, it's very easy for me to recollect um, who is going, uh, who I have, you know, because they're around me, they're, they're volunteering or they're, you know, helping out. Um, so I do recommend um, being part of um, being part of the community, um, getting involved with um, the community, and whether it's courses, whether it's volunteering your time, um, lots of events happening, things like that. Um, you know, um, that's something that you know. Word of mouth, of course. Don't limit your options. Like word of mouth. Don't be don't be afraid. I mean, you know, um, you know, you know, to 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 ask. Maybe you know of a family. Um, you know, um, you know of a family that they've got some a boy that you're interested interested in. Um, find out someone who can contact that family and say, "Hey, we've got somebody in mind um, um, for your son. Um, you know, is he ready? Um, um, is he open to the ID? Um, what's he looking for?" Um, so again, you have to get out of your comfort zone. You need to be um, get comfortable with uncomfortable. Um, but it it is it's a it's uh, it's it's tragic. I'm finding it that Subhanallah, like um, you know you know now well well into the late twenties and 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 starting to get married and and looking um, that in in itself is a problem. I mean, try and start as early as you can if you if you're ready, of course. Um, but vary your strategies um, between and 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 up your dua as well. Rise your dua. You know, make a lot of dua. Um, if you can go to Umrah. And make dua next to the Kaaba. I recommend that. So Umrah, um, dua in general, uh, word of mouth, um, interacting with the community. Um, um, you know, these are some of the things that come to my mind. Um, but I'm not really in this the space of of you know matchmaking. You know, I'm more so into consultancy and counselling. Um, I I know that there's a there's a program. I just wanted to sort of bring this to you. I did see this um, recently. Um, one of the brothers. Um, from um from i think canada baba ali um they call him um he's got half half your dean i think he's got a, a matrimony website but he has i i saw a video of his very recently and he has a very very unique um program for matchmaking um um one of those you you come to an event and the event is done in such a way that makes that that brings out your um your true your sort of your your characteristics by certain activities that have been um skillfully um you know um put together and crafted and, and when i was listening and and their 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 um success rate is very high the success rate there is even countries people from different countries um flying overseas to be a part of that event to find a spouse right 
we need initiatives like that. I'm, I'm, uh, like I said, it's not my space, but I, I'm very interested, and I'm, I'm maybe, I'm, I'm even thinking of maybe reaching out to him and saying maybe we need to bring this to Australia. It's a very unique, unique method, um, and and I think it's, it sounds really exciting, and I think we need to try and, um, um, inshallah, be a part of this. Inshallah, jazakallah khair. Uh, just one final question, inshallah, we're, we're reaching towards the end of the program. We would love to have you for three, four hours, but uh, <laughs> that's always not possible. Um, but th there's a few questions on gender roles. However, I'll read one question, and I think that enca en encapsulates all the other ones. Uh, what is your perspective with the changing landscape of gender differences and roles in these times? And how would you define the role of men and women uh, according to Islam? And inshallah, mm -hmm. we can conclude with this question. Wow, that's a loaded question. Um, um, you know, subhanAllah, um, we need to go back to basics. We need to go back to the Quran and Sunnah and um, look at the roles as defined by Allah, who, who engineered us, who wired us, who programmed us, who knows what's best for us, um, and who, um, who gave us, who defined, he defined our roles um, as a husband and as a wife. Um, so I think um, going back to the Quran and the Sunnah, um, the male um, is the breadwinner. Um, the the male or the husband is the is the um, he he has a duty to provide financially um, um, to his wife. He has a duty to provide um, uh, physical safety, okay, um, emotional safety, mental safety uh, for his wife, okay. Um, um, he he um, you know he there needs to be a mutual mawadda, which is affection, okay. There needs to be rahma, which is mercy. Um, the wife uh, primarily um, um, looks after, as it all looks after her um, her home, her children. Um, there's nothing wrong with her working if it, if the work is halal and it's permissible, and the husband is okay with that. Um, um, you know, but um, you know sh she needs to spend a lot of time with 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 her children. Um, just to keep that in mind, um, you know, um, when it comes to um, a woman, you know, being, you know, playing out, um, you know, the role of a woman being feminine, okay, uh, the man being masculine, you know, when when a man is 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 um is playing his role as a man, he's he's responsible, um, he is um, he is um, you know uh, you know respectful, um, he is um, a provider. You know, when he's doing all of those things um, and she is being, you know, uh, a feminine, she's looking after herself. She's not neglecting herself, not neglecting her husband and his needs. Um, you know, it's going to be, you know, it's, I guess the relation should be um, symbiotic, meaning that the relationship should be um, where there's, um, they're, 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 they're both benefiting each other. They're both, um, it's, it's mutual respect. It's, it's all of those things. Um, um, you know, so like I said, you, you, you've, you've really caught me because you've, you've asked a very loaded question to ask in the last, in the last minute, but, um, we do go to very, in a lot of details, um, in the course, in the marriage course, um, about the role of the husband and the role of the wife. And some of the things that, um, you know, and understanding, I guess, um, the the differences, and, and as Allah says, well, said, kal untha, and the male is not like the female, and so we do need to work with our different. We have to be careful um, in this day and age. We have um, movements, we have campaigns that are really trying to, um, you know, change the way that things have been for a long time, and that is not healthy, and. Um, that is that is going to cause a lot of damage, um, but like I said, this isn't the time now to talk about this um, um, uh, very loaded question. And um, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala um, keep us um, safe um, from the fitan and from the um, that, that that we are surrounded by. Amin, Jazakumullah uh, Khair. Thank you very much, Sheikh. You went non-stop for an hour and a half. Uh, but after all those counselings, you're probably uh, used to it. <laughs> yeah, alhamdulillah. No, I mean, I love what I do. And I okay. love um, to see that couples uh, are able to, you know, really um, um, resuscitate their, their relationship and their marriage and um, to take it to greater heights. It's, it's just 
you can, it's priceless. It's so beautiful to be um, able to make a contribution to people's lives. Alhamdulillah. Well, it's a, it's a great, uh, great honor uh, for me and for Isra to have you as, as our guest for tonight, inshallah. I'm sure it was very beneficial. Uh, I personally uh, learned a lot. There's always something new to learn about, uh, about marriage. Um, uh, there's a few questions about the course. Um, I went to the website. So the link that I've provided is muslimmarriagecelebrant.com.au slash marriage course. Would that be the right link? So uh, Muslim marriage courses, Muslim marriage courses, um, uh, dot com. Muslim marriage courses dot com. Muslim marriage courses dot com. Okay, uh, I think someone had posted that earlier. We'll just post that up again. Yeah, and that w w will explain everything that comes with the course and what the course addresses. Um, inshallah. Okay, great. So we'll just and, yeah, and I mean anyone who's in, interested can reach out to me through my social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram. Um, inshallah, if you want to link up with me on LinkedIn, I'm happy to link up with you as well. Inshallah, um, and through my website. Thank you very much. I've just I've just linked that as well. Muslim marriage um, course courses dot com. <laughs> Well, thank you once again, Sheikh. Uh, I really appreciate uh, you giving us, uh, you know, time from your busy schedule. Uh, thank you all for those who attended as well. Inshallah, may Allah bless your marriages. If you're single, may Allah bless you with a righteous and good spouse. Uh, if you're married and mm -hmm. having difficulties, may Allah uh, rectify your affairs and solve your problems, Inshallah. Amen. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. And uh, Inshallah, the recording will be up in a couple of days uh, for those who have asked for it as well. Uh, have a good night and uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.